Hello, my name is Rob Reynolds and asked me about question number 18. And so I thought I'd share with them a couple ways to do this. Um, one way I would not recommend is to add 64 to both sides and then try to take the cube root. Um, although this does successfully solve for x because the cube root of anything cubed is itself, uh, the cube root of 4 is 4, and remember there's only one answer when you take the cube root. If you take the even root, you have to say plus or minus, but if it's the odd root, there's only one solution. Uh, but because this is x cubed, you know that there should be three solutions. And all three solutions may not be real. In other words, they might not cross the x-axis. Uh, one might cross the x-axis but the other two might be imaginary solutions. So we're going to look at um, how to find the imaginary solutions by using a rule. And the rule is the sums and differences of cubes, which I talked about in class um, the other day, but for my online students, you write down the bases of what's being cubed. So right here we have x is the first base, so you write down the x value. y is the second base, so you write down the y. And then you square the first base, so x squared is x squared. You take the product of these two bases, that's here. Then you square the last base and place it here. And if you were in class, first you keep this sign so it stays positive. First you keep it, then you change it. Last one's always plus. Once again, first you keep this sign, so this is a negative, so this is going to be equal. First you keep it, then you change it. Last one's always plus. That's how to factor the sum and difference of two cubes. So one of the examples that I gave uh, to you was x cubed plus h. So the first base is x. What do I mean by base? It's what's being cubed. So sometimes students think that 8 is being cubed, but it's not. It's the 2 that's being cubed. So 2 becomes the second base. So you write down the two bases. You square the first base, so x squared. You take the product of the bases. Well, the, the product of the, the first base is x, the second base is 2, so the product of the bases is 2x. And then you square the last. And squaring the last two gives you this 4 down here. So the rule is write down the bases, square the first, take the product, square the last. First you keep this sign plus, which they did. Then you change it, and the last one's always plus. So once again, the rule is you write down the bases, you square the first, take the product, square the last. First you keep the sign, then you change the sign, and the last one's always plus. So going back to the original problem. And let's apply this rule. The base here is x, the base here is 4, and so I'll apply the rule, write down the bases, let's square the first, take the product of the bases, square the last, first you keep the sign, which is a minus, then you change it, and the last one's always plus. So we set each of these factors equal to 0, and we get the same answer that we did before, we already knew that x equals 4. That's one of our solutions. But we're left with something interesting over here. Now we're left with two solutions. And since I can't find factors of 16 that add up to 4, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So here I go. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. Everyone knows the value of a is 1. It's the number for x squared. b is 4 and c is 16. So I plug that into the formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. I almost want to sing the song. Here we go. x is equal to, not that bad though, x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of, and my suggestion is bust out a calculator and type in 16 minus 4 times 1 times 16. And you can see that gives us negative 48. So if I plug in a negative 48 here, um, every time I take the square root of a negative, out pops an i, those imaginary numbers. So I'm going to say negative 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 1, which is my i. And I'm going to try to come up with a perfect square that goes into 48. So I'm checking for things like 2 times 24. 4 times 12 is not bad because 4 is a perfect square, but I think I can come up with a higher perfect square. Let's try uh, 16 and 3. I'll get to the final answer a little bit faster. So this is negative 4 plus or minus, I have an i, I have a times of 4, and I have a square root of 3 all divided by 2. So 
the next step is I'm trying to um, simplify this. So again, I don't want to cancel part of a sum. This could be a trap here, uh, but I can cancel both sums. So I'm going to divide every term through by 2. So I have negative 2 plus or minus 2i square roots of 3. I can say divided by 1, but that's a waste of time. So I'll say, hey, there's my other two answers. Now don't forget, I had an original answer as well, which was 4. So I end up with three solutions. 4 is one of my solutions. And then my, uh, my math lab is going to make you write this um, negative 2 plus 2i square roots of 3 is what I would prefer. But remember, this author sticks i at the end. And then you're going to change that middle sign from a positive to a negative. I hope this helps.